Hello, this is Jeff Ron from Leica G Systems in Houston, and today we're going to do a video on using an older Leica GX1230 uh, as a base station with Satel radios to, to use your new RTK rotors on a bit. This is really designed for existing customers that have the older 1230. Let's take a quick look at the uh, overview of the 1230. Once again, it's a system that went out of production like 12 years ago. Um, this is a legacy unit. And this video is really designed for Leica clients. Okay. Um, it really just goes over. It's a real tribute to the quality and durability of this 1230. So we can still use this older system as part of our, our production in the field today. Um, basically, here's a picture here. If we had a, a 1200 system, we'd have a radio uh, antenna and the, the, the radio mass transmitting data. And then our new rover with the antenna here, GS18, can work off this base station. So you have as many rovers working off of this base as you want. And we can integrate GS14s, GS18s, and GS16s, and GS07s. Okay. So why would you want to have a base station? A lot of our clients are working in the network, but the UHF radio adds another dimension. Uh, the base rover can use in areas where there's limited or no cell phone coverage. That's really important. And maybe if we're working on, the, we have a bunch of clients on the fringe of the network. So if we're working in areas that are longer distances from the base station, you know, when you start hitting 20, 25 miles from a base station, your accuracy will degrade and the performance will degrade a little bit. So this adds another tool in the toolbox. Okay. We have some clients that really increases the accuracy because you have a shorter range. The range of radio is typically three to five miles. So your CQ values will be smaller because you have a shorter baseline um, in the range of 400s to 800s, horizontal, vertical. So some clients will use this on textile projects. So they'll set control or a setup point with VRS, then set this base up and use this with UHF to, to get that tighter accuracy. Okay. Another neat uh, use is if you're trying to get into tougher environments like trees, um, you have a shorter baseline at the radio, the UHF radio, the sat tail is 35 watts. We can push radio through the foliage, and this might give you uh, better luck if you're pushing the boundaries to, to get shots that you couldn't get before. Okay, so it's really just another tool in the toolbox. It's great for clients on the fringe of the network, like up in College Station, Columbus, and Beaumont, and um, to really help their productivity. So once again, it's an older unit. The 1230 is not made anymore. It's discontinued. Um, but can still be used in the field. Okay. Just be careful on this is a picture of the 1230 on the back of it of the box. There'll be a little label so that the, the 1230 is GPS only. The 1230 GG means it's GPS and GLONASS. And you really need a 1230 GG. Um, GPS only, you can have spikes and limited performance. So bare minimum, you need GPS and GLONASS to be productive. Okay. The 1230 um, is not GNSS, so it's basically GPS and GLONASS. There's no L5, there's no Chinese Beidou, and there's no European Galileo. So the newer GS10, we'll go over that, will have the, this GNSS functionality. But once again, so it's, 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 it's like an old hunting dog. Um, this dog will still hunt. It's not going to be as good as the GS10, but it can still be a productive unit, and it can help clients save money by utilizing this. So if they're looking key thing is they're looking to save some money and then later on add a GS10. This this can help them out big time. Um, the 1230 cannot interface to a CS15 or the newer CS20 data collector. Um, this green panel is called the RX1210. We have to use that to set everything up. Okay. Uh, here's a schematic. So the 1230, the power source, um, we can basically use the batteries like down here, the GB222 battery will slot in. And two of those batteries should run it, you know, all day, around eight hours. It's four hours per battery. Okay. Um, you have to use the older CF card. And if I'm going to use a Leica card because it has the, the width. Um, if you use a third-party card, the width of this can be bigger and you can bend the pins. And that that's an expensive fix. That could be an eight nine hundred dollar fix. And because this the twelve thirty is discontinued in two thousand eight, it's tougher to get parts. So use a Leica card. It's got the right footprint. And that's where you store your data. Okay. Um, you can also use a GEB71 cable. Here's the part number and the 1.8 meter uh, cable 
next to GEB97. These two hook together if you want to power off your 12 volt battery. So you can either use camcorder batteries or uh, a hardwired cable. Okay. Um, we'll just go over this limited RAM. So if you are inputting Texas South Central, we can upload a geo model gem file on the CF card under data GPS geoid to utilize that. Otherwise, you have to transfer a limited file. There's only 20 miles in the system RAM, so that, that'd be recommended. And since it's only GG, um, we'll go over the data compatibility. We can use a 3DS mode, and that will work with the older GS14 radios and the GS18 15s. So we have to downgrade the radio signal to the Satel 3DS if we're merging and using 14s and 18s together. Here's a schematic of, of the back of the 1230. So there's a P1, P3, that's port one, port three. And basically to interface, we'd use a GEV275. Here's the part number. So it'll plug into port one, in our example here, and plug into the Lima connector down here on the Satel radio. And here's a picture of the, it's just a single cable. So it doesn't power, it's just an interface and we use the power like in the previous slide, okay? Uh, please note, you have to have a radio license for the FCC from the FCC to program and to use the satel based radio. Um, so once again, on, if you have a GS-18 or GS-16 or GS-14, you have to have the external radio. It sounds obvious, but on the 14 and 16, it's you want the GAT-109 adapter and the GAT-2 antenna. And then on the GS-18, we can use the GAT-28 antenna that goes right into the GS-18. Okay. So basically, um, I'll pull this simulator up. If uh, this is the the radio, RTK profile is loaded. We can click on here, and basically the change channel will allow us to change the channel to match up with the base station. The Satel 4SK mode would be for the older radios, and want forward error correction or I can go to the Satel 16 FSK. And that's, we have the channels programmed in, so I can change the channels here to match up to the uh, base station. Okay. All right, so let's take a look. Um, if we take a look at the Satel radio, if I zoom in, see it says Satel 4 Pro, that's the newest radio. There is an older Satel radio called the Satel Easy Pro, and you'd see it up here. So the Satel Easy Pro would use the We'd have to use the Satel 4SK on the rover. And if you had the Easy Pro, um, basically the, the data format would be uh, Satellin 3AS, okay? So how do we change the data compatibility to match it up? We'd hit this button down here one time, arrow down to data compatibility. And if we're using GS14s and 18s, we have to set that to Satel 3AS and then Satel 4SK on the rover side with forward error correction. That's the same language they'd speak, so it's almost like French and Spanish. If I had a newer GS10, or if I was running strictly 18s, I could change the data compatibility to Satel 16 FSK. So if you're running a GS10 and you're pumping out GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, and Galileo, we want this language. And then on here, we set the 18 or 16 to Satel 16 FSK to match up and match up the, uh, the channel. Okay. All right, if, if um, the other thing is make sure the frequencies are the same, so we're going to assume that the radios are programmed correctly. Uh, if I hit this button two times, I can arrow down on the base radio because i got to set the channel on the base radio and the compatibility and also set on the rover. So it's a two-step process. So we can arrow down and uh, Typically, you'd have a TD light here. The TD light would be transmitting every second. The RD light means receive data. So if you get in step on, that might be blinking. Okay, so we can hit this button twice, then arrow down to the channel, select the frequency, and then set it and store it. Then once again, we go back to the rover and set that channel there. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take a quick look. Um, when you set the base up in shorts in a wide open spot, because your rover is only, only as good as the base station. So if you set next to trees, the base station gets blockage, then your rover is going to really struggle. Okay. 
Um, here's a picture of the radio and the mast. You should have a 5 dB antenna. Raise it up as high as you can, 12 to 15 feet. That will increase radio range if you're trying to get 3 to 5 miles. When we set up um, the 1230, we'll use the AX1202. And the ARP, which is antenna reference plane, is at the bottom of the steel. So again, if you're set up on a pole, this is where you measure to to, to input your height. So we'll pull the simulator up and we'll pick the AX1202 pole and we'll type in the antenna height. So let's take a look at the 1200. So here's a simulator. So how do I set it up? I hit configure, then interfaces, and I've got real time port one. So if I edit that, I put the mode to reference and my port is port one. That's where I'm plugging the GEV275. And I got a device called Satel 4 Pro. So if I hit device, if I hit the radio tab, I created a new one and I quoted one dot Satel 4 Pro and the baud rate was 115.2. So I stored that. I, I could, if I was running the older Satel Easy Pro, I can create another device and I'll put a name that makes sense. And basically, the only difference is the baud rate's 19.2. That's really important. And that if I had the older Easy Pro, then I could pick that, and then away we go. But since we have the 4 Pro, we'll hit continue. On my RTK data, the summary doesn't show, but we want to set that to RTCM version 3. Then we hit continue, and hit continue to the main screen. And then we should be um, in good shape. To set it up, we'd hit number one survey, and I could pick my job. I have a coordinate system, so if I hit F6, coordinate system. If I edit that coordinate system, I can come down to the geodal model, and then that, see the CF card? That's where I put my gem file. If I'm using vertical to type in, I want to have that coordinate, the gem file right there. Otherwise, I just got real limited uh, gem file I can put on the internal or system RAM. Okay, so we'll hit continue. The antenna, we're going to say AX1202 on the pole. That's the antenna for the 1230. And I could pick my point. So if my point was typed in or uploaded, we can pick that point. The antenna height, we type in the, the elevation of the antenna, or the, the antenna height, sorry, to the from the ground or the control point up to the antenna reference point. Right now we have a position here. So if I was just working out on a job site um, and I had a known position, I can hit enter, new, and then type in the east and northern orthometric height and store that. If I was just doing a relative survey, the here button will grab a position, and then I can just call it like temp. Do that temp position, and it grabbed the position um, from my autonomous. So it's plus or minus 10, 15 feet, and that'd be good enough for me to start working. I can collect static data, send that into Opus, and then update that position in Infinity. Please note the base will never fix because you're collecting raw data and you're pumping out raw data. So we store that, then hit continue. What will happen, the arrow will start pumping out. It's going to send data to port one to our radio. Then the, the TD light should be blinking. If I want to record static data, you can see it's recording static data as well. You have measure PP. I hit user, config, survey settings. Then log and raw, I said static, and I did it for five, every five seconds, five or 10 seconds should be fine. You can turn that off if you don't want to use static. So that's how we set up the 1230 and how we got it uh, running. Okay. All right. Um, once again, there's the ARP that you measure to. Um, let me just show you a quick video. Um, this is us in the field. It's raining, so just uh, it's not the best quality, but change the channel in this case we have a GS18 over here uh, we, we want to make sure the antenna is hooked up on it but we're at close range if I click on the icon it says change channel this is set up for the radio and we change the channel 6 we'll change it here we're running Satel 4SK, that's the same as 3S, with forward arrow correction on. We'll hit OK, and the arrow is pumping. I can click on there, and it's telling me it's coming in every half a second, which is good. 
and hit the star key per position baseline, that shows how far we are from the base station. So typically three miles, and now we're pumping data, and the icon up here is with the radio. So if we switch back to the network, that icon will change back to the network radio. Okay, so that's how you change the channel, the pumping data. The radio data comes in automatically. There's no dialing in. If it sees it, it, it gets it and fixes. So not like the network where you've got to dial in to activate. Okay. Okay, and um, so that shows once again just on this uh, simulator, we change the channels. Uh, it started pumping data. I could click for my current position and take a look at the, the WGS84 line to see how far away we are from the base station. If I click on here, it tells me every second it was coming in. So it shows me how good my data is. So if you start hitting three, four miles, and I click on here and that, that last receive starts going to 10 seconds, you know you're at your limit of your radio. So that's a good little tip. Quickly, we'll just go over the new GS10 is the new GPS receiver that replaced the 1230. So it takes an SD card so you can store the whole, uh, as much static data as you want, easy data transfer. There's no pins that, that can break or bend. It, this GS10 can interface to a CS15 or a CS20. So as long as the firmware is on the same level, we can set it up with your existing data collector to get it going. Um, once again, the CS15 or CS20 can have the whole of the Geoda model for Texas on board, the coordinate system, so it's no issue there. We can collect static data, no problem, once again, with, with the GS10. The, this is the key thing. The GS10 is full GNSS. It's going to track GPS with the L5 third frequency, GLONASS, and the Galileo with all four frequencies. The old, old Bach is the, the key one there. And also the Beidou. And it's future-proof, so if new signals come out, these can be updated. And um, so it'll send out all the GNSS data. And this is really going to help your rover because... Your rover is only as good as your base station. So if you're tracking triple frequency with Galileo on the base and sending that out, your rover is going to perform a lot better. We can transmit the RTCM version 3 MSM data. And um, so once again, for new clients adding base stations, we would recommend this. Um, what's neat about the old 1230 is if a client had multiple units, like older GS14s, he can have the 1230 paired with his 14s on the Satel 4SK mode, which is the Satellin 3S, and then he could add a GS10 and pair that with his 16s and 18s to pump out GNSS data. So that's a really neat feature as well. Okay, and this will help you push your performance of your rovers next to trees in, in tougher areas. So if you need any help uh, with this or need information on pricing, just feel free to send an email to jeff.rawl at likeaus.com or give me a call at 713-516-5446. I well, hope you found this beneficial and helpful, and uh, please stay safe and be well.